typically um, I, I do a lot of counseling. Um, I do counseling for kids who have um, counseling on their IEP. So that's um, they're in special education and um, they receive counseling services. Um, then I also do what's called informal counseling groups. So those are for the kids where um, they're not in special education, but there's clearly a need to um, you know, build maybe coping skills or work on different strategies um, just to get them through the day. Um, sometimes you just need someone to talk to, to be honest. Um, so I do, I have that scheduled um, on specific days and I usually spend my day either in, in person, I spend a lot of my day doing um, testing, so assessments, um, that's IQ test or achievement test, um, also like behavioral screeners. Um, I do screeners for ADHD, for autism. Um, I do a lot of classroom observations, even virtually, I do a lot of classroom observations um, just because um, teachers reach out and they're just like, I need help. So I schedule a lot of those. Um, I spend a lot of my day, my time talking to parents. Um, typically, parents who are very unsure of the whole referral process to um, get their kid um, started with the process to be in special education. So there's a lot of like psychoeducation around that, explaining what special education looks like now versus what they have in their head. Um, so I do a lot of that. Now, what actually happens is I do all of that plus fields random phone calls from teachers um, because maybe a kid is throwing a tantrum in the classroom or a, a scholar, sorry, I'm in a charter school, so I'm gonna go between kid and scholar. Um, or a scholar is maybe, you know, they said something really concerning um, and then I would have to do a, a suicide assessment or a risk assessment to see if there's any immediate danger to themselves, to others, um, my first year, I actually ended up having to, you know, call 911 for a scholar who was immediately suicidal, had to go in the ambulance with him and everything. So, of course, I'm in the ambulance, I'm at the hospital, the rest of my day is done. Like that counseling session is going to have to be rescheduled. I have to call that parent tomorrow. It's just sometimes things just come up and never really know, you know, ACS workers show up. So now I have to feel that. So it's just a lot of things come up throughout the day, um, but it's exciting, always on my toes. I was told that school psychologists usually spend more time doing paperwork than actually interacting with children. Is that the case for you? Um, it's not the case for me because I made it not be the case for me. Um, there is a lot of flexibility in you know, making my own schedule, um, especially since I'm the only one in the building. So not really much to collaborate in terms of the school psychology specific jobs that I have um, or tasks that I have. Um, yes, paperwork is a big, um, big part of being a school psychologist, but um, something that helped me is accepting that I don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. So if I have I can I have a general template for my reports and of course I personalize it but explaining what each subtest in a in a assessment that's never going to change you know um reason for referral usually doesn't really ever change honestly um as well um you know there are parts of a report that you, I don't have to type over all of the time so that helps cut down on my time um you know doing things piece by piece um also when I get a referral, I get background information and I fill out that part of the report before I even test the scholar, you know, so that when it's time to put in the results and everything, that part is already done. So it's really, it's, it is what you make it. If, if you're a person that would put it aside all the way to the end, then you're going to spend a lot of your time doing that paperwork because you didn't really split it up or, um, yeah, maybe just like putting it off. And then now you have six evaluations that you need to write up rather than it could have just been half of one because you finished the other five, the half, five and a half, you know, last week. So it's really about how, what you make of it. Make sure to check out the My Career tab on the BC Navigator app where you can track your career progress based on the amount of credits you've earned, stay updated on upcoming events from the Magner Center, and watch our videos for insight and advice on your career field.